Hello everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age Veilguard. I'm trying to decide if I want to say the Veilguard or just Dragon Age Veilguard because nobody calls it the Veilguard except for the, you know, Dragon Age TM, the Veilguard <laughs> logos. But no, okay, yes, now I need to go, I need to go, I need to go chit chat with this guy. Oh boy. The enemy of my enemy. <laughs> Speak with the Dreadwolf. Ah! <laughs> this is... Oh, look, you can see I've got two of them unlocked. I wonder if the art will reform itself. This is definitely, uh, I remember, I, see, I saw these when we first came in, although I don't know if they were moving. I think they were. Um, but I was like, are we not gonna like ask like what this is? Wait, and... that room wasn't there before. What room wasn't there before? I don't think. What room? This room? Oh, this is for the Dreadwolf. Um, but this reminds me of um, Origins when you go to the Fade, which I actually quite enjoyed. Most people don't like it. There's a whole mod that lets you skip that section. I liked it. I wish I could skip the deep roads. I would do that. But, oh, Solus is making rooms for me. Actually, I think the place is responding to my need to have somewhere quiet. Like a disco ball effect. Or maybe this will be Solus's old room. <laughs> oh wow. Nev or Harding must have put my pack here. Mm, makes sense. Better place to sleep than the infirmary. But Guess I can spare a few moments to unpack my things. Ooh. All right. Okay. Hang on. Ah. Uh, that's. I'm gonna cry. That's the Inquisitor's chair, and the Inquisitor's helm, and the Inquisitor's sword. The only one that you, the one that you used during judgments. Hang on. Yeah, at first I have to see what this room looks like on its own. Is this? It's a. I thought it was gonna just be like a floating, like floating rocks and stuff. But no, this is an aquarium type thing. That is definite. This is actually this is what I've always wanted since I was a kid. I've always wanted like one whole wall. It's usually like a Bond villain thing, but I always thought it was so beautiful to like have like a wall, like an aquarium wall, or to like there's a really good book I read, A Letter to the Luminous Deep. So good, um, where they like live in like this experimental architectural like underwater home, and like it's not just like oh an aquarium like a contained thing outside your your window. It's like or like uh, twenty thousand leagues under the sea, right? Where like you're you're in like an underground. I mean they're in a submarine in that one, but like you know what I mean? Like you look out, you see like an endless expanse of ocean, and it's like so cool. But this is definitely fade looking. Like with some of this stuff is very fade looking. Oh, this is so beautiful, though. This is Solus's old room, like... I, d I just wouldn't have necessarily expected him to have, like, an office with, a, like, a seascape. But, like, that's, like, amazing and beautiful. On life in the lighthouse. This ancient logbook is filled with meticulous veilfire runes. Though it is encoded, flicky, flicking through it offers vignettes of borrowed memory. Fearful of refugees are ushered to the, li ushered to the lighthouse. Cannot talk. Through Illuvians. <laughs> Emerging from the infirmary and libraries as soldiers, spies, and scholars. Gardeners plant long extinct herbs that grow, are harvested, and wither in the blink of an eye. The sharp smell of distilling medicine wafts from a window, and a poison for the enemy drips into a vial. The arguments of a war council go late into the night. Forbidden songs are sung freely and fi with filthy lyrics substituted for the Evanuris's name. Finally, a heated conversation silhouetted against glass with quick shadows darting behind it. The argument ends with a wordless but unmistakable impression. You summoned them. You feed them. Interesting. So, of course, it's not like a... It seems like the rebellion was maybe sort of haphazard in its start. And Solus... Potentially, either Solus did do this, or somebody else did, and he's sort of, like, taken up the mantle. Where it's like, either Solus is the one being told, you summon them, you feed them, or he is the one saying, you summon them, you feed them. But I think it's probably him doing it, and be being told, you summon them, you feed them, you need to take care of them. You know? Interesting. Uh, interesting, interesting.
Oh, my bed. This is just a, what are those, like a couch bed? This would be so amazing. This would be really amazing to sleep next to. Oh, cool, I get to do it myself and like have memories. Okay, okay. Varric and his life lessons. I asked him how he was supposed to stop Solus, and he gave me this. Take a long, hard look at it, kid. It'll always oh. show the face of a hero who can get it done. Oh! So we can't do these in the the mirror of transformation i feel like that's really cheesy though take a long hard looking at kid it'll always show the face of a hero it's like did you use this because Varric doesn't consider himself a hero i'll say i look good a damn good looking hero if i do say so <laughs> <laughs> a navaran urn baron van markham you wanted the undead to rule Navarra, but you forgot Wh about the Mornwatch. What? Then after I put you down, the Mornwatch sent me away with Varric to stop the noble families from complaining. To stop the noble families from complaining. Um, I wasn't impulsive. I think that was not an impulsive decision. And I can't believe they let you keep the urn. But the undead rose up to the point where they wanted, like, somebody had enough sentience to want to rule. Interesting. No, I think I think you made the right call. The Mornwatch is supposed to protect the world from dangers outside the realms of the living. That's what I did. Even if it wasn't politically convenient. I think that tracks, right? We're like, maybe, maybe we're not, I don't think we're quite as impulsive as Harding, but we're not as thoughtful, quite as like, you know, planning as Neve, right? Editing Squirrel here. I have no idea when I stop calling her Neve, but I do explain why I'm calling her that later on. And it's just kind of par for the course for me in Dragon Age games. If you listen to my the first couple videos of my Dragon Age Inquisition that I played on the Xbox 360, you will hear me pronouncing Dalish Dalish for like four episodes, and I don't know why, or something like that. I mispronounce it for some reason. I don't know why. It's hilarious and also cringy now, but yes, so I'm just par for the course mispronouncing things in important Dragon Age games. We're kind of going to be somewhere in the middle, maybe, where it's like, yeah, I, I, did dis I ended up making the decision. I made the call to stop an undead war, right? So it's like, yeah, I made a call to leave that mayor behind so that he could be... And I guess, again, tying it into death and life and stuff, right? Because like, I think she's essentially the Mornwatch is somebody who like, who like walks that line between the living and the dead, facilitating and protecting each side from the other in some way, you know? So it's like the idea of leaving... like sort of judging a man to leave him like his fate his death like how he's going to die or live is not totally outside the realm of her purview in her mind but i could definitely see that getting abused at some point if if you let it go too far an ancient elven scroll because i'm dalish or because i'm elven i guess i don't know i'm not dalish really the gave me this after i saved his caravan from bandits he told me the scroll went back to even before to winter so that elves had a rich history even more than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Even more than the rest of us. Oh. He loved traveling, so do I. Do we want to be bitter? The gods make that. I mean, I love traveling, so do I. He loved traveling, so do I. Is I'm like leaning towards that, but the gods make that hard. Let's try that. That history looked better before Elganon and Gilanane came back and started blighting everything. Yeah. Okay, that does make sense. Am I, like, making decisions, too, where it's like... Is this gonna, like, affect certain things in the future, you know what I'm saying? Interactions or something, potentially? Where's my last... Oh, because, like, where's my last one? A combat manual. I'm a warrior. A meditation upon the use of blades. 
Must have read this thing cover to cover a dozen times during weapons training. I'm gonna say, I'm not generally a person who's like, oh, the glory days, the old days, I wish for simpler times. I enjoy my life as as it is now, you know? Like, I, I'm i glad for the experiences I've had, but I don't, I try not to hold on to things necessarily. Change, I like to go with the flow, you know what I mean? Like, in especially with like my living situation and my job, you know, it's just like, you gotta enjoy the things while you have them, but don't regret them when they go, kind of. You know, easier said than done, but like, I don't know. So, not really a old, my, my peaked in high school kind of a thing, you know? Oh, the number of times I banged my head against this book trying to make the concepts work. But that training has kept me alive so far. I really like the voice. I like the voice a lot. Right. That's better. I carried around a oh. book. How do I connect to And an urn. Just and a sleep. And a or... scroll. Oh, relaxing. Maybe if I clear my mind. Let me sit on the couch. Yes. Nope. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna stand. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm <gonna> go. <laughs> I love her hair so much. This is like leaning on me. Back so soon. It must have been worse than I had thought. It's been a while. Hello, Dreadwolf. Ah, but perhaps I am mistaken. You may be here to correct me, to tell me that my concerns were unfounded. <laughs> I am, after all, remembered as the god of lies, treachery, and rebellion. I <laughs> remember this purple chap. Yeah, uh-huh. So you're gonna be insufferable about it. See, this is the reason nobody likes you. <laughs> I led a rebellion for centuries that culminated in the creation of the Vale and the destruction of the Elven Empire. Okay. This is among the reasons nobody likes you. <laughs> My information was accurate. Now you realize that the danger is real. I need to know what the gods are planning. You are asking for knowledge no mortal in this world is privy to. If I am to share it with you, I need to know what makes you the right person to lead the fight against Algonan and Gelamin. He's always doing this. He's always like, you know, hmm, let me see. Let me let me see how I can use this random person who has stumbled into my plot and messed things up for me. Let me see if I how I can use this. You know what I mean? I think I don't want to be too like what is it? What is the word? Not levitate. Um, too light. You know, like this needs to. Like there is some seriousness that needs to happen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just like yeah, it's essentially like, buddy, you have limited options. You know what I mean? Someone has to do something. I may not be the right person for this job, but I'm the only one left. So your call to action is that any attempt is better than none? Yeah, what? Well. In the Morn Watch, I had to deal with undead nobles threatening all of Navarra with civil war. Our squad was overwhelmed, and we were supposed to retreat. But you attacked instead, defeated the nobles, and prevented a war. How do you know that? You helped Varric pursue me for the better part of a year. It would have been foolish not to learn about who was hunting me. Woo! Then you know that if someone has to make a call, I'll do it. I suppose I was not so different when I started. Okay. Started what? My rebellion against the Evanuris. The elven gods, as you call them. He's so they handsome. to reclaim their dominion <laughs> over this world. To accomplish that, they will need two things. First, the Blight. What exists in this world is a bare fragment of its power. The rest is imprisoned. Until they release it. Interesting. So the blight is coming from somewhere else. I wonder if it's that realm that drove Andril mad and she brought it back with her? Like, whatever it was that drove her mad? Eh, that would be interesting. Uh, but I like it. It's like, Solus will remember that you're you calling yourself a leader because you're the only one left. And I'm not necessarily calling myself a leader, but, like, I like that I'm building my character. Like, it's helping me figure out who my character is by, like, making these decisions. And like making these calls and then having it kind of summarize it for me where it's like you know 
and, and like through like the dialogue too, where it's, she's like, she's like, listen, during the morn watch, like I made a call, like I I took decisive action because nobody else would, you know. It's like you look around, if no one else is gonna do it, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like, if something needs to happen, it's at least better to try than to not, you know. So okay, I can work with this. I can work with this. Let's see. Yeah, this is yeah. I was like, this is a big question. The rest of the blight is imprisoned. There's more than what's in the world already? Yes. Centuries ago, the Magisters of Divinity <gasps> opened my prison. A tiny fragment oh! of the Blight escaped. Oh! That fragment grew beneath the earth and led to the Blights that have swept across the world. However terrible the Blight is now, it is a mere fraction of what we will see if its full power is unleashed. He is dropping some lore game changers! What the heck? He did, he just admitted he just admitted that freaking so maybe the golden city was where he imprisoned the Evanuras and then when the magisters cracked it open it became the dark city or the black city you know like I wish I could go back and like have a like a text box like that's like oh yeah you want to track your conversations because I want to read that again they cracked open a part of his prison, which is a wild thing to say also because he was technically, as far as I know, like asleep for like 2,000 years. Um, but I also do think that he was the elven, like at least in some way, he was the elven man who helped Andraste. That would match sort of with like his like mythol, if I, if the mythol, so like if the mythol Andraste thing is even remotely correct in any way, then the, I can't remember his name. But the elven guy who's like Shartan. Shartan. Um, who like helped Andraste free the slaves of Tevinter and was like one of her right hand dudes, you know? It makes sense that Solus was in some way affecting that guy. Because Solus was in like a deep sleep for like 2,000 years, but he was wandering the fades, sort of. But he wasn't really conscious, I think. But like, anyway, blah, 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 blah. This was, but this is, that is some big. Yeah, it didn't... I just... I can't believe he just admitted to making, like, this is gonna wreck the charm tree, like, which is good, finally. You know what I mean? Like... That he... No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was supposed to be a golden city. Maybe that was the prison, right? But... Apparently, when they cracked it, it let the blight out. So the blight was in the, the blight was in there with the gods, or the gods like, were infected by it. Now it had to have been in there with them. So he didn't just seal the Evanuris in there; he sealed this thing in there. The blight didn't escape with the gods. Elganan and Gilanane escaped largely empty-handed, fortunately. Most of the blight is still trapped in the prison I created ages ago. So what we saw at the village, that's them not at full strength? Correct. <laughs> He's like, listen, I, listen, I told you. He gets to say I told you so a lot. I don't understand. Elganan and Gilanane were elves like you, right? Why would they want to blight the world? It is my fault. As the Dread Wolf, it's... I was a thorn in their side. He loves a guilt complex. When my efforts weakened their grasp on the elven people, they grew frustrated, then desperate. And turned to the Blight. Once the corruption took hold of them, they were blind to its horror. It was just another source of power for them. Now they would blight the world without hesitation and call us backward and foolish for opposing them. This has to be so interesting that these are people that he knew so well. And like probably like loved you know as some like as friends or whatever and then like had to hate so much or pity or something you know there's a whole series of relationships here that we are not even getting into at all but he knows them so well but then they would probably know him so well you know what I mean too um, but oh my gosh 
he he loves the thing is is Varric is like oh he'll always try to talk like it's not his fault but Solus also loves taking the blame for things he loves having a guilt complex like a martyr complex and it's like my dude stop <laughs> you know they made their choices like it's my fault I was pulling the elven people away from them so then they made the decision to like do terrible dark evil magic it's like okay calm down calm down Solus questions. But what would they need to do to free the questions. Blight? And how do we stop them from doing it? They will need to pierce the veil to reach the Blight's prison. My Lyrium dagger is one of the few artifacts capable of doing so. We've already recovered it from the ritual site. Excellent. Then they will have to make their own. That will give you time. You said the gods needed two things, and the Blight is the first? What's the second? Blood! Follow us. You're okay. They have called themselves gods. And what is a god without worshippers to sing their praises? I'm not gonna bend a knee to blighted, murdering monsters just because their ears are pointed like mine. Oh, snap! Okay. I don't think many other elves are going to either. Uh... Agreed. Algernon and Gilanane care little for the elves. They will find worshippers among those hungry for power. Tyrants and bullies. The cruel and the corrupt who fear their own vulnerability and seize any chance to feel strong. Mm. If you hunt them, they will lead you to Algernon and Gilanane. Thank you. I'll go pork at the cruel and corrupt, and we'll see what we find. The Veravas, the lighthouse Saluvian, can take you anywhere, if you master its secrets. Have you done so? Uh. Not yet, uh, well, but we've got one of the Veil Jumpers working on it. We're busy. She'll get it sorted, and we'll see how it goes. Yes, I suppose we will. And when you speak with Varric, please tell him that I regret what happened. Hmm. I mean, we knew that. We all knew that. But, like, it's good of him to say, but also, again, Solus loves to pile on the guilt to himself, you know? Ooh, a new appearances. I can modify them from the wardrobe. I don't just have to go to the the chest that was in the infirmary. Um, do I have new casual wear? Nope. Armor may cause clippings and scenes designed for casual wear. That's thank you. I mean, modders put that on their stuff, you know, like. And yeah, like the, some of the armor is big. You know? There are 108 helmets and 117 casual wear. I mean, they say 117 casual wears and 117 armors, but I think those two are actually just combined. Because you can wear them whenever. Oh, so we can have them stay... Ooh. Goes from hobnobbing to adventure at a moment's notice. Okay. Why are these locked? Let me have them. Decoration mode. Oh, I can just like, okay, I will acquire. <gasps> There's 59 decorations and I get to place them. Oh, they're finally going to let us decorate our rooms. Oh, I'm so excited. I mean, it's not going to be like crazy, but it's going to be good. It's going to be so fun. I love being able to put like in, like memorable or cool things up. Like I always, like I said, I always wanted to put up like the like the elven like um, trees, like the carved trees or the hala or the elk. Like you had one little hala statue, I think at least one, but... in the room in the Inquisition, but it's nice to have a little more control over it. It's just little, it's not like a huge thing, but it's fun. Especially if they'll, they'll be like, sort of like important memory type things, you know? It'll be nice. I can get in here now. Let me in. I figured. Oh, is this gonna be where Bellara hangs out? Yeah, it's called the workshop, isn't it? Oh, and that's the thing she's working on. Spooky of you to put it in there. Inside a man's skull. 
packing list. Collected cereals from Tevinter. Spice collection. <laughs> Water, maybe. Stuffed Hala! Irulan has offered to help pack, unsure as to why possibly she still feels bad about the breakup. Irulan was the younger woman, yes, okay. That we were talking, there was strife in Irulan. Oh, I was like, is it telling me to go down? No. Oh. The Caretaker's Workshop. Upgrading your equipment at the Caretaker's Workshop will increase item statistics. Finding another version of an existing item or purchasing it from a merchant. Okay, so if I had purchased the helm and then I found it in the wilderness, um, it will unlock the properties. That is cool. I like that, where it's like it, it, you don't feel bad that you've accidentally bought uh, something and then found it in the wilderness. Mementos. Interesting. Okay. Um, I mean, I kind of keep finding things, so upgrading... Seems like it's probably better to upgrade my armor. Oh, that's, that's the material cost. Okay. Sure. We can do it for everybody? Oh my gosh. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, I want to get, get under there. Oh, hey. Does she want to talk? Yes. Hey, can we break that central well in your room? Quick. Yeah, I just wanted to see. Just had to check. Toldar, it's a tunnel. Vedun gar velos atredum. But velos atredum is, is nothing like it's a tunnel. I did hear it's a tunnel. Yeah. I remember. After you touched the dagger, the prayer, the proclamation, it's a tunnel. What, what exactly are you proclaiming? <laughs> they don't remember. No one remembers. We don't even know what we lost. You're cute when you're focused. Now is not the time. Um, it's interesting, right? Like, now it's like, oh, so now you kind of know sort of how the elves feel a little bit, right? Where it's like, you know, there's so much lost. But I think the dwarves are kind of in a worse position in that I don't think they even have anything that's a remnant of their the fact that they had magic at some point that they had a connection to the fade or to spirits or something and that that's been locked away like that's been um totally taken from their memories like not from their memory but from their like cultural memory you know you're busy i i shouldn't interrupt no no wait wait sorry please stay we can talk about the stone? About Isatunal? Maybe explaining it to someone else will help get my thoughts in order. I'm ready to spitball. So what is it? What does it mean? Isatunal is an affirmation, a statement of existence, of, of being. What are you reading and how do you it know? It means I am here. But no, not, not I. I is singular, but it isn't. We either. Hmm. We is multiple, but also separate. <laughs> what? <sighs> is the tunnel is the eternal hymn that encompasses all time, all spaces. I am, we are this and that, here, there, now, and forever. Okay. What's important is that you're happy. Happy? Happy's not it. Whole. Right, maybe. I'm certain is the tunnel describes how we, the dwarves, once were connected but none of the books say anything about it none of the histories are right if we forgot something so important what else did we forget yes i don't know uh, i'm sorry I, I don't expect you to have an answer Th thanks for letting me babble by the way this conversation went Anytime. a little weirdly that's what i'm here for <laughs> like it's like I get it right like and I get the concept it's like, it was kind of like talking with um 
Sarah in the last game where it's like, it's like, I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, she says something a little off the rails, and I'm like, oh, but I get what she's saying, you know? And then the Inquisitor only has the option to be like, hmm, well, oh, you're so weird, Sarah. Like, I don't get it. And I'm like, no, it's very obvious what she's trying to say, you know? That, like, she's, like, here for the little people. You know what I mean? Stuff like that, where it's like, she's, uh... You know, the, the way she described her organization, organization such as it was, was it made sense to me, but the game just only seemed to fit, want you to be like, you know, oh, what, I don't get it, you're so weird, and I was like, I don't like that. Um, and this kind of thing was kind of similar, where I get it, right, where, like, the stone is not necessarily an entity, it's kind of what, like, from what I remember from, like, Buddhist philosophy, where it's like, none of us are separate, we are all... Like, ex all existence exists together, but there's not even a together because there's no separate. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I'm saying it very badly, but, like, it was a, it was a super interesting type. Like, a three-hour class I take once a week was Buddhism and Existentialism, and there's, like, a series of courses that were related for, like, three semesters. Blew my mind every time. Felt like my brain was just going... But, um, it seems like that, right? Where it's, like, I think a, a cruel way to call it might be hive mind. Where, like, and maybe the Titans are, were not necessarily benevolent. Maybe there was some sort of, like, the dwarves were worker bees. And, like, maybe the elves actually put the Titans away because they were like, you're enslaving, like, a whole species. Um, you know, of people. You know, a whole race of people. And to be worker bees when they're, like, clearly capable of, like, independent autonomous thought. You know? Um... More likely the Evan. Uh, I was. This was like pre in my head, pre Evanuris going bad. But um, more likely the Evanuris were like, "We want your power. We're taking it." You know what I mean? So interesting, though. Interesting. It does kind of make sense. Like there might be like there might be like there might be like different forms, like different like uh, like bipedal forms of the Titans or something. But that but each one is. It is a titan, the stone, you know, and there's just like manifestations, like a finger and an arm, you know what I mean? Like, like that's kind of what each part would be, They're just part of a bigger whole, you know? Interesting, interesting. Having everything floating around is so wild. So wild. Oh, here he is. I was like trying to run around and look to find the, the third Sola statue. And I found it. Cause I was like, I kept trying to go like down underneath here because I was so sure it was down there. But I was like, I don't know if they, they gave me the first two, like access to the first two sets. So surely the third one is accessible. So I just started to look around the outer, the outer edge of things. Okay, okay. that did something. All right, I will go and check. The wisp is going in. We've talked, yeah, we talked to Harding. I don't know what's here. Have I gone in here? Is this like a hangout spot? This is cool. Notes on a caretaker. The note has a smear of paint on one corner. Have they always been here? There are beings in the crossroads, unknown even to the wise. Though the most ancient ones make any domain their own. Certainly this caretaker belongs here now. I wonder what we look like to them. Need is a scaffold, and the needs of the living ever rise and fall upon it. Hunger, thirst, sleep. Imagine the constant cacophony to one sensitive to such things. Or my too simple. Wants are fleeting. Needs have deeper roots. Perhaps that's why I find this particular spirit both comforting and disconcerting. The prospect that our heart's desire and our truest need could differ, or even at odds, is hard to contemplate. Interesting. So it kind of reminds me of Cole, the compassion spirit from Inquisition, right? Which we... I really hope we get to interact with some of those characters. But at the same time, it's like... Like, if I don't get to do my world state, where I say, like, kind of the outcome of them, because Cole's outcome could be completely different. He could be more human or more spirit, you know? So that to me, again, the reason, like, not having any sort of world state really indicates to me that we aren't going to see them because the outcomes on some of them could be so different, you know? Sarah could be completely, like, uh, gone, you know? Like, you could, you could have, like, uh, um, some of them you could have even not recruited, you know? Some of them you can kick out after a while, so... This makes me... I think even Dorian you can dismiss after a while, so now I'm even more depressed. Great. 
come out. Okay. I was going to say, this looks like that guy in the top right and this bottom left, or like sort of middle left, looks like Elgarnan. And apparently it is about Elgarnan. To solo spirit speaker, second to Mythal, dread. I knew it! I knew that he was associated with Mythal, like in an official capacity. Our Lord Elgarnan has received your words and will give them consideration they deserve. Rest well knowing our Lord Elgarnan is devoted to his people and their well-being and wishes for them to the lives of peace and abundance. Regards, Desmol, bloodhound to Elgarnan, keeper of his rights. On behalf of Elgarnan, son tamer, crown of the Ar Arlathan, first of the firstborn, lord of the day and of the night, who woke at the dawn of the elven. And that's the thing too, right? It's like the ancient elves, like where did they come from if not from, like there's even deeper history here, right? Like we think we have fragments of an ancient history, but there is deep, deep lore. Like where did everybody come from? How did they, you know what I mean? Like, is there a divine source for life or is it just, you know, the the wonders of happenstance, you know, of like like genetically being in the right place at the right time, you know, and it's just like Yeah, I just am like, Mwah. Mwah, it was not a good way to say it, but yeah. Uh we already read that. Letter from Solus to Algarnan, to Algarnan, son tamer, general of the enlightened army, first among the Oh, general. So this is because Solus is at the end of Trespasser, right? That we started out as, like, you know, generals, and then kings, and then emperors, and then gods. First among the Evianers, ruler of Rathan, who woke at the dawn of the elves. From Solus, spirit seeker, second to Mythal, Fenrir the Dread Wolf, who is no younger. Who is no younger than Elgarnan? Or is that just, like, one of those fancy titles that has a different meaning? I ask you again to reconsider to claim there's no difference between ruling as a king and ruling as God begs the question of why you feel it necessary to claim such a title for yourself. Most of the people accept your rule. You have shackled their bodies. Must you shackle their minds in turn? There is much we disagree upon, but you must see that hobbling our people with such claims will limit their spirits and tarnish the gleam of your leadership. Your power is unquestioned. May your wisdom match it. Interesting! We are getting some... Ooh, getting ancient lore! This is so exciting! Actual letters from so from like the ain't from the Evinuris, you know from the ancient ancient ruling elves interesting that too that he had these title like these affectation titles you know what i mean um i wonder if he didn't mind them or if it was just merely what you did or if it was a way to be taken seriously you know by somebody who obviously cares a lot. And he only has some of the names for Elgarnan because then Elgarnan goes on to be like signing off his letters as like, you know, a god. Almost. Not quite, but he's some of those titles can very easily be turned into god. But the fact too that apparently like Solus is like, hey man, you've already like shackled them physically. You shouldn't do that to them mentally. But asking a long-lived, undying people to forget, you know, like some, you'd have to do something. Because the people didn't die. They'd just go into the Uthanera Uth, Uth, something? Like, Uthanera? Uthanera. They would go into a deep, deep sleep where they would then just wander the fate as spirits, you know? Um, and that was like, there was like sort of a, a way to die that way when you so chose, you know? Oh my gosh, this looks like the, um... The Inquisition, like, botanical, like, whenever you found a new plant, this was something similar to this would pop up on the tarot cards for each plant. Oh, boy. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, it's so nice to find the tidbits. Why is she acting like she's freezing to death? Pantry entering new area. Wow, thank you for the announcement game. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, my sister did let it slip. Apparently, yes, I think this is actually going to be a kitchen of some sort. And people will come in here and, like, cook or eat or hang out at least. I'm so excited to watch this place improve. This is crazy. I, every now and then I'm just like, I'm playing Dragon Age 4, you know? Oh, and it's telling me... Wherever my character is facing, it's got on the very top right. You can't actually see it probably because of the way I have my, my webcams usually in the top right. But there's like a little Google pin, like a Google Maps pin, and with the name of whatever you're looking at. Only where your character is facing, not where the camera is facing, which makes sense. I don't think Neve had anything, but 
You, you, you guys. Long God, it had to be three. I mean, again, we kind of, we did kind of bring this on ourselves. Like, I'm telling my rook, I'm like, don't take, you know, credit for things you don't need to take credit for. And Solus is the same thing. No need to take any guilt you don't need. But it's like, what did Solus expect us to do, you know? Like, of course he knew we were going to stop him. And he knew we were hunting him. And he tried to, he figured out who Rook was. And he's like, Varric trusted you. So obviously I wanted to look into you. But that was like the whole point of disbanding the Inquisition was that Solus wouldn't figure out who we were as people. But Solus had, I mean, he knew us really well whenever we were like a team, you know? So... He doesn't really know Rook like he knows everybody else. Varric, I'm so glad you're still alive, and I'm so glad that you're freaking narrating the story. Ugh. So Solus told the truth about the gods. You heard? It's bad, Varric. If you'd seen them at his crossing. The team needs to act fast. And it can't do that with me leading from a bed. You've got to take point on this. I can't do what you do. I've barely been holding it together in the short time you've been out. You don't need to do what I do. You just need to get it done. Rook, when I put this team okay. together, what did I look for? A detective to find the Dreadwolf, and a scout to get us the lay of the land. Exactly the people he'd expect me to recruit. Disciplined. Predictable. And then there's you. Remember when we first met, kid? You stopped an entire undead rebellion with less than a dozen Morn Watchers. That is pretty crazy. Just needed a bolder approach than Watchers usually take. And no one else knew it. Only you figured it out. Ticked off a bunch of snooty Navarans, but you've got a knack, kid. For taking off snooty Navarans. Finding a way through the wildest shit I've ever seen. That would be pretty crazy to see. a plan that no one expects. On the best day of his life, Solus wouldn't see you coming, Rook. And don't worry. I'll still be here to talk if you need me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm gonna like tear up about it. I'm gonna be so just... <sighs> but I like this that we're kind of building my character. I think maybe some people would maybe think it's heavy handed. But I like it when a game is like, here's this trait you have. And you can either be like, I don't want to do that anymore. Or you can be like, like pushing into it. And I picked the background I picked for a reason, you know? So I think probably you might still get similar, if not the same, talk from Varric about like certain traits that you have, because like, you know, a lot of them are similar back, kind of similar-ish backgrounds, you know. Um, I was trying to think, because it's like, oh, Solos wouldn't expect you to be unpredictable, and I guess it's like, because I was like, well, what about the Inquisitor? But then I'm like, no, Solos really does have. He thinks he has a pin in everybody. In like, it, or in like, even in like groups of people, where he's like, they will act like this, you know, and then they do unexpected things, which is why either being friends with the Inquisitor or falling in love with the Inquisitor was just way outside the realm of his expectations, and it threw a loop in his plan for a bit, um, or at least a loop in his and in, in his feelings about it, you know, because um, before he didn't really have any guilt for it until he started to get to know people, and then like. I read an interview recently-ish where Patrick Weeks talked about um, how Solus was designed to sort of, because certain people don't like him and, and certain people do like him, but it's like how you approach Solus, he, he was basically a mirror. He mirrored that back to you. If you approached him like being, you know, standoffish or you approached him being like, no, you're wrong or something, you know what I mean? Like, or like, what do you, what do you mean you think you know? Like, like aggressive he would respond in kind you know um so the reflection of solace was the reflection of how the inquisitor treated him you know i don't know if that's a hundred percent true but it's how they it made sense you know what i mean and like i think to some degree it is true you know um and i th do think people who have issues with solace like there there are valid points you know what i mean like i'm not gonna be like no you should like him because like obviously if you don't You've got some good reasons. And I read a really good article a long time ago about a woman who played a Canari and had an issue with Solo, specifically because a lot of it seemed, t I think, because it seemed tied to um, certain, like, ways that, like, she had experienced, I think, I think being a black woman in the world, you know? And it was like, oh, it was a super interesting read, right? Where I was like, I had not even considered any of this. The thing is, is I hadn't even encountered a lot of her lines of dialogue that she had gotten because I picked different dialogue options 
and so like I I experience I kind of bypass like if you romance all this you actually kind of bypass a lot of the like racial stuff he'll say um like it's just not it doesn't come up in those conversations and at first I was just like oh it's because like you're bringing like you're seeing a different side to him you know and it's like oh you know what I mean like he still has this capacity maybe to be you know elitist but it's like um I think what it actually is kind of is like because of the way you choose to interact with him he reflects that back to you and so he is kinder and more open and like starts to see the world differently you know what I mean so it's like we all have the capacity for terrible and wonderful things inside of us and he's no different you know what I mean just his power scale is a lot bigger <laughs> you know his 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 concept his paradigm his uh, his what he can affect is way bigger you know so anyway, blah, 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 interesting stuff. I'm just contemplating so many things. <laughs> there is something. Did Nev tell you about me talking to Solus and Fate? Mm -hmm. I had some good arguments with Chuckles back in the day. I can't imagine being stuck with him in my head. But how are you feeling about it? Hmm. We are decisive, we're bold, we're unpredictable. Um, oh, sorry, What I think what I was boiling down to like the whole like unpredictable thing and Solus can't predict you and I'm like, mm, but then I'm like, well, actually, it's because Solus, like with the Inquisitor, Solus did not predict that some random person was gonna run up and accidentally touch the orb like during activation, you know, and like get the powers in the hands and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So like that threw, a loop, threw him for a loop. Somebody's unpredictable, un accounted for action right um so getting somebody who is really good i think at least in taking action you know what i mean it is is a good idea but i think at some point you can become predictable right so it's like but at least at this point so isn't really wasn't really sure of who we were as a person and now he's probably gonna figure us out here soon but he's not he's not a jerk like he hasn't been He's been very, like, listen, I told you. I told you that this was going to be a bad idea. You know what I mean? Like, I told you not to interrupt the ritual. But it's, like, also, like, you know what I mean? I feel like it's a rock and a hard place where he's, like, I told you not to interrupt it. And it's, like, you told us you were, like, destroying the world, essentially, to make a new one. And we, of course, had to stop you. What did you think people were going to do? You know what I mean? It's, like, you know, yeah. So, nobody, everyone's arguing and nobody's right. You know what I mean? I wonder how, how would she feel? A bold, decisive woman. How would she feel? And one who, you know... Doesn't take herself too seriously. But will make a call when it needs to be done. How would she feel about it? And they don't, we don't really share a head. Like a headspace, you know what I mean? Like... They kind of, I guess she has to meditate. She has to be calm. He's not like they're constantly yapping in the back of her head. Like she has to like get to a point where she can access him. I'm still not quite sure. I mean, he's in the prison. He's in the, <gasps> he's probably in the black city right now. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna probably get him out. Oh, the Inquisitor. <laughs> I have, I have my own, I have my own theory as to what will happen when the Inquisitor and Solus meet. Um... I think if she's gonna be unconventional about it, it's like, well, you know what? We need his help. Like, it's pretty useful to have in my head, and he can't really do anything, so, like, it's not like he can, like, do anything right now to, like, mess with us except talk to her and, like, give her about false info, but, like, I think it would be, it would be interesting to have him, you know what I mean? I'm biased. I'm so biased, though. That's the problem, is I'm so biased towards Solus. Even if I can't critique him, I'm very biased. But we'll try this one. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. We can't stop the gods without what he knows. And there you go. You don't <laughs> have to love him to deal with him. He also asked me to tell you that he regrets what happened. Hurting you, I mean. Chuckles is sentimental. Yes, he is. He could burn the world down. The thing that would make him cry is a single flower with blackened petals. Oh my gosh, that is such a good way to put it. Oh, that really is. Uh, it, yes, I can, I can see it in my head too. I can see this scene playing out. Oh my gosh. 
When I took over at the ritual site, I had to make a call on who came with me to knock over that statue. It was the first decision I made leading this team, and Nev got hurt because of it. You made a decision with the best information you had. Sometimes you do that, and people end up hurt. Or worse. What would you have done? What would I have done? Hmm. Probably gotten myself killed and failed to stop the ritual if you hadn't stepped in. A good leader isn't someone who never makes mistakes. It's someone who admits when they make one. That's how you earn their trust. You know, what's interesting is Iron Bull makes a comment in the first game, and it's just like in conversation, like when you just like walk up and like not even a cutscene, right? You're just like chatting with him outside the stables or whatever. And you ask him about the canary, right? And it's like, uh, you, I can't remember exactly what it leads up to it. You're just asking him general questions about the canary. And he, oh, I'm trying to make sure my paint wasn't smeared. Um, he says the canary do not pick leaders based on like who's the most charismatic or the strongest or the smartest. He's like, we pick leaders based on on those who can make the tough decisions and live with the consequences afterwards. And that, that for some reason has stuck almost word for word, I'm pretty sure verbatim in my head for a long time. Because like, I think Iron Bull can get a little underestimated and he does it on purpose, but like he has some banger lines. And like that one, I think cuts to the heart of leadership, right? Like you want a good king. What does a good king mean? Does that mean a kind one? Or does that mean, you know, one who gives a lot of gold, who, who loves his subjects, blah, blah, blah. Well, what happens when the empire goes into financial ruin because he was so kind and generous that like he didn't spend time actually looking at the, the you know, economical finances. I, sorry, I'm totally hopefully gonna edit some of that out, but like, I think that's the thing is when people sometimes say a good king, they think a kind one and it's like and this is why i thought alistair in origins would not make a good king and technically in my world state alistair is not king queen honora rules alone um because i did not think alistair would make a good king i don't care what kind of kaladin bloodline or kaladin not kaladin that's a uh, way of king that's brandon sanderson storm my archives um callahan Callahan, I don't care what kind of bloodline infused with dragon blood or whatever that he might have that it can apparently cure wardens too. But like, bloodline doesn't make a king. That's the other thing, right, to me, is that a king has to learn and, 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 and rule by doing, you know, learn by doing. And uh, Alistair was just too fanciful, too, like, and he never wanted to take the lead on anything, you know, and it was just like, somebody who didn't want that power in the first place anyway you know what i mean so it's like i don't know so i think whenever i think about that and you think about what's that his bro his half brother right the king who dies in origins right who was a good man and that's the thing right is it's like oh a good king is a good man you know and it's like well that oh gosh what is his name i can't i just played origins not that long ago but like he was a good man but his head was in the clouds. He was constantly living in a story and wanting to wanting to live his life like he was in a story until the day it got him killed, you know? And it nearly destroyed his country, you know? But he wasn't a bad man. He was a good man, you know? But good men don't always make good kings is essentially what I'm trying to boil this down to. But bad men don't make good kings either. You know what I mean? Demeter's crossing was awful. While we were there, we found one survivor, the mayor. You left him to fend for himself. Not everyone was happy about my decision. We're just starting out and I'm already losing their trust. The key to earning the team's trust isn't to only make decisions everyone agrees with. It's showing the team that they can tell you whatever's on their mind, even if they think you're full of crap. And know you'll listen. See, I think that's, like, not totally true. It's like, I mean, yes, a leader who listens is good and important and great and all, but, like, a leader has to have a lot of other qualities. I'll let you get some rest. The Inquisitor's You're over there be fine, Rook. in the corner. Uh, hey, one last thing before you go. I've been racking my brain thinking of contacts who might Ooh, help us with these contacts. gods. You got any ideas? Nothing. But being a leader <laughs> isn't about having all the answers yourself. It's about knowing who does. Nev has connections to a whole world that Harding and I barely know. Might be worth talking to her. Will do. 
Thanks. Freaking, I cannot Anytime. believe Varric just said, I got nothing. When we, the entire array of the Inquisition is like the, the, the companions <laughs> from that. You can stop fussing over me. Go see what the others are up to. Yeah, he is such a dad. It's so good. It's so funny to see him being a dad. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm actually, I can't, I'm, it's just going to bother me for the whole game is where it's like, you have contacts. You cannot tell me that everybody who was in the Inquisition, Dory and Sarah, all of those people are like, I mean, Cullen's retired and I'm happy for Cullen. Cullen has retired and, and he's, he's taking care of dogs and other Templars who are trying to get off Lyrium, you know? <laughs> you know, rest in power, Cullen. But, like, everybody else, like, Cassandra, you know, Leliana, like, I know that there's all these, like, ooh, they, a bunch of things could have happened to them, but I just feel like it was so unkind to not even, like, give us a hope that they were going to show up in this game at all. You can't tell me that those people who, like, worked to save the world last time are just doing nothing now and hoping for the best? Like, you know what I mean? Like, but again, I mean... What would be better is if Varric says, yeah, I have plenty of contacts, but that's the problem, is that, like, we need people, well, let's say, we need people soul, who Solus says, like, no, but Solus isn't the problem anymore, so, like, those people could help now, you know what I mean? Like, the people that, like, that Solus knows, which is why they weren't contacted, because, like, he could predict how they were going to react, it's like, that's not a problem anymore! Now, these Algorand and Gillanon, they have no idea who people are, you know? Again, I'm glad to get new friends, but don't, like, I don't know, just... The fact that I don't even get a, a hint of the people that I have, like, spent years loving is, like, in, like, enjoying or disliking or whatever. I just wanted, like, little vignettes. That's all I wanted. And I don't even probably get any of those. Because we just... Ugh, whatever. I'm not gonna let that spoil everything for me, but I am upset about it. Because... Yeah, we could. He has a whole host. Plus, from two, what, Fenris? You know what I mean? If Anders, if he's still around, like, you know what I mean? Like, there are things that could have tracked, that could have gone along, and it would have been really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I need to be done with that. But, um, ahem, I'm losing my voice. Check in with Neve. Okay. So we just, I just tried to go check with her, and she didn't have anything to say, but I had to talk to Varric first, apparently. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. <laughs> I hope I'm doing these episodes okay, but thank you all again for joining me. I appreciate it. Now, I am going to cut away to my Patreon. Thank you. All right, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fane, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my Sapling Tier patrons, Reese Galito, thank you so much, and Sebastian James, thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' support. Uh, and I want to give an extra super special shout out to my Forest Tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you, Christopher, so much for your support. And thank you so much, Nightshade, for your support. I appreciate you both very much. And thank you all again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.